In today's video, we are going to be talking about what you can eat on the keto diet, what foods you can eat, and also how to understand macros, which is the breakdown of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. This video is part two in a series I am running this week on my channel about how to start the keto diet for beginners. In the first episode yesterday, we talked about what the keto diet is, why it is so effective, and the benefits. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure to check it out either before this one or after. As I mentioned yesterday, the keto diet is beneficial for a lot of people, including those who want sustainable weight loss, those who are diabetic, pre-diabetic, or insulin resistant, and those who want more consistent energy throughout the day. Through my online coaching program, Keto Start, I have helped hundreds of people reach their health and fitness goals simply by tweaking their diet. But when you are first starting the keto diet, it can be pretty overwhelming trying to figure out what you can and can't eat. So in today's video, we are going to break it all down, talk about what foods you can eat on the keto diet, how much fat, protein, and carbohydrates to eat, and how to put together a keto meal without tracking. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate, I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient, dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share, and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Now I am super excited for today's video because a lot of people, when they first hear about the keto diet, think it is restrictive. And while it may restrict more foods than the standard American diet, which literally allows you to eat anything, the reduction in variety is well worth it for how good the keto diet makes you feel. And I promise you, if you follow the tips we are going to talk about in today's video, the keto diet will not feel restrictive. So we're gonna start off today talking about macros, what they are, why they matter, what foods fall under each category, and then we will get into how to put together a keto meal without tracking. What are macros? If you know anyone who eats the keto diet, you've probably heard them talk about their macros and wondered what they were referring to. Macro is short for macronutrient, which refers to the three nutrients we as humans consume in large quantities. These are fat, protein, and carbohydrates. When someone is referring to their macros, they're talking about the percentage of each that makes up their calories for the day. The average Westerner's macros are roughly 50% carbs, 35% fat, and 15% protein. The average keto diet is typically 10% carbs, 70% fat, and 20% protein. Now let's break down the three and talk about how they tie into keto and our health. Protein. Protein is the most important macronutrient. The body uses protein to build and repair tissues, as well as to make enzymes, hormones, and other body chemicals. Protein is especially important for bones, muscles, cartilage, skin, and blood. If you do not get enough protein in through diet, your body will break down your tissues to reuse them. Examples of foods high in protein include beef, eggs, and fish. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the only non-essential macronutrient, and by that I mean they are the only one that we do not need to get through diet. There are essential amino acids, which is protein. There are essential fatty acids, which is fat, but there are no essential carbohydrates. When we eat carbohydrates, the body converts them into glucose and raises your blood sugar levels. Insulin is then released to shuttle the blood sugar to your cells so it can be used for energy. When your blood sugar is always elevated, your body will use that for energy just to get it out of your bloodstream. If you are constantly eating carbs throughout the day, you will rarely be burning fat, both dietary and body fat. And if you remember yesterday, we talked about how much energy the body can store from carbs and from fat. The body can only store a very limited amount of carbs for energy, less than 2000 calories, but it can store so much more through fat. Even someone who is lean at 15% body fat can have over 800,000 calories worth of energy stored. So because we can only store a limited amount of carbohydrates for energy, if your body is relying on this fuel source, 
It means that you will have to constantly be eating throughout the day in order to keep your energy up. Eating a diet high in carbohydrates means that your blood sugar is always spiking and crashing and your energy levels will do the same. And the other risk here is that when we eat too many carbohydrates too frequently, our bodies can become insulin resistant, meaning they can no longer use carbohydrates efficiently. Signs you are insulin resistant include having difficulty losing weight, excess abdominal fat, and skin tags. And insulin resistance will lead to type 2 diabetes if you do not address it. Thankfully, the best way to counter and reverse insulin resistance is with the keto diet. So if you just realize you might be insulin resistant, don't sweat, you're in the right place. Examples of foods high in carbohydrates include bread, pasta, and juice. Fat. Fat is an alternate fuel source for the body, but it has other functions as well. It is responsible for making and balancing hormones, forming cell membranes, and transporting fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. While humans can survive with no carbohydrates in their diet, they cannot survive without fat. When we limit our carbohydrate intake, our livers convert fatty acids into ketones. These byproducts become our body's new energy source. Under most circumstances, you need to be consuming less than 50 grams of carbohydrates per day to be in ketosis. Examples of foods high in fat include avocados, butter, and cheese. Macro breakdown. We briefly discussed the macro breakdown of the keto diet earlier in this video, but now let's get into it further. Getting into ketosis is dependent on one thing, restricting carbohydrates. When your body doesn't have glucose to burn, it starts turning fat into ketones for energy. It is important to eat a lot of fat. Fat is going to be what satiates you and what keeps you energized. However, there isn't a number you should aim for. Eat enough so that you are not hungry. And if you are hungry, eat more fat. Protein is important to keep our body functioning properly. Not getting enough can result in symptoms such as hair loss and dry skin. You should make sure you are hitting your protein goal each day. In general, your macros should look something like this. 70 to 80% fat, 20 to 25% protein, and 5 to 10% carbohydrates. But here's the thing. I do not think that looking at macros in terms of percentages is the best way to approach the keto diet. A better way to think of it is like this. Protein is a goal, carbs are a limit, and fat should make up the rest. There are various apps out there, such as MyFitnessPal and LifeSum, that allow you to scan barcodes and weigh your food out to track how many calories and how much fat, protein, and carbs you are consuming. Well, I do think these apps are useful when you're first starting a keto diet. I do not think that you need to be tracking constantly in order to get results. Tracking can become tedious, so I prefer to use a hand tracking system instead. This system makes it quick and easy to put together meals and ensure you stay under your carbohydrate limit. So here is how to put together a keto meal without tracking. Start with protein. Pick at least one protein-rich food from the following list. Beef, lamb, eggs, chicken, salmon, pork, tuna, sardines, mackerel, crap. You should aim to have between two to four palm-sized portions of protein per day, depending on your height. Someone who is more petite and has a goal body weight of around 100 pounds or 45 kilos would be closer to two serves, whereas someone taller and maybe more muscular would be closer to four. From there, you can add a source or sources of fat. Pick an oil or fat to cook your protein and other food with. Butter, ghee, coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, tallow, lard, and duck fat. Use about one thumb-sized portion for cooking. If you have weight gain goals, you can use more. Next, you want to add low carb fruits and vegetables. Some options include cauliflower, broccoli, lettuce, mushrooms, bell pepper, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, and strawberries. You can include one to two fist sized servings of these with each meal. The next step is to add additional fat. The amount of fat you add will depend on your goals. Someone with weight loss goals will add less fat and someone with performance goals will add more. Here are some options. Additional oil or animal fat, butter, avocado, olives, cheese, nut butter, macadamia nuts, almonds, walnuts, coconut flakes, chia seeds, hemp seeds, or sour cream. Add anywhere from two to seven thumb-sized portions. 
Again, depending on your goals. Ideally, you want to add enough fat so that you are satiated after your meal. It might take a bit of practice to get the right amount, but keep a mental note of how much you added each time and adjust accordingly for next time. An example meal using this formula might look like two serves of salmon, one serve of olive oil, two serves of spinach and mashed cauliflower, and four serves of additional fat with pecans and cream. Using this method allows you to put together a keto-friendly meal without having to weigh out and track everything. Like I said before, apps like MyFitnessPal and LifeSum, yes, they can be useful, but you shouldn't have to rely on them. Anyways, guys, that brings us to the end of today's video. Make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss the videos in the rest of the series. Tomorrow, we are going to be talking about keto and intermittent fasting, what it is and if it is necessary on keto. And remember to check out my online coaching program, Keto Start, a seven day keto crash course. Keto Start covers a lot of the topics we are going over in this series through text, audio, and video. You also get access to a private Facebook group where you can ask me questions and I can offer you support. And you get bonus downloads such as shopping lists, a meal plan, and a meal building guide. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out the rest of the series, you can find it here. If you want to catch up on my recent upload, you can find it right here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.